Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Jackson. I'm a registered nurse and an assistant professor at the University of Calgary. And um, this is a quick video to show you what nursing professors and nursing instructors mean by critical thinking. I think we often say that we want nursing students and nurses to demonstrate critical thinking, but we're not always very good at explaining exactly what that means. Um, often we talk about saying, well, you're not showing critical thinking, but I've seen students get very frustrated because they don't understand uh, what the expectation is. So this is just a quick tutorial to explain a bit more what we mean by critical thinking and how you can demonstrate that in your assignments. So we'll just switch to the whiteboard. All right, so Looking at what is critical thinking, I think in nursing we often talk about the bridge between theory and practice. And so what we want you to be able to do, do I just get my colors organized here, is to be able to go from theory to practice. It's a very um, high tech visuals today, but then we also need to go from practice back to theory. And how do we do that? That is through, oops, that is through adaptations. There we go. <laughs> so what does this mean? What does it look like when we go from theory to practice using adaptations? So if you were working with a patient and let's say he needs renal dialysis three times a week. He's been diagnosed with acute kidney failure and now he is a new patient starting dialysis. So the standard protocol for dialysis is either Monday, Wednesday, Friday or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday and you usually have like a morning slot, afternoon slot or evening slot. Um, so generally there's this protocol for how we deliver dialysis. So when we're talking to someone, um, that would represent our general theory of how we provide dialysis. And when I say theory, I don't necessarily mean like capital T theory and like the theory of pain or the theory of caring or something like that. I'm talking more about the standard ideas that we use to inform our practice about what, what it is that we normally do that works for most people. So we can say that is our theory of providing dialysis. To manage acute kidney failure, we need to have dialysis, you know, three times a week on approximately that timetable. So that's the theory. But in practice, what if this patient says, well, I work in the city and I don't want to lose my job. I'm, you know, I'm the sole um, income earner for my family and, you know, I can't stop working. And so this person says, you know what, I can't do three days a week. I have to be in the office. Well, then what we as nurses do is we don't say, okay, well, too bad you have to quit your job. Or we don't also say, um, you know, okay, I guess no dialysis for you. What we have to do is apply adaptations to say, how do we go from our standard idea of theory and of what, how we give dialysis to practice? So we might say, okay, well, can we arrange for you to do nocturnal dialysis at home? So you do it overnight at home and then you don't have to come into a clinic three times a week. Could we explore, you know, maybe using peritoneal dialysis instead of uh, hemodialysis? Maybe we could talk about making sure that patient always has the evening slots so they could still work during the day and then have time in the evening. We could also consider seeing if there are financial supports that are available for people with um, acute kidney failure to see if we could take some of the financial pressure off the family and have resources um, coming from another place. So all of those examples are how we take our general theory and say, how do we make this work in practice for this person? And when you can do that, 
that is demonstrating critical thinking because you are showing that you can apply the appropriate adaptations that will get you to practice from theory. So what, what I see when this isn't working is students will say things like, okay, well, they have to have dials three, three times a week and that's the hospital policy. So he just can't work anymore. So now his partner has to go get a job. To me, that shows a lack of critical thinking because it's assuming that everybody has to fit the healthcare model we have. And we know that every person is different and we can't have a standardized system with um, patient-centered care. So that is what we expect when we say critical thinking is to show that reflection and that understanding of complexity. Now, if we were to go the other direction, and go from practice to theory, we could look and say, okay, well, in practice, I'm trying to assess someone's pain and I'm having difficulty doing that. So then we could look at the theory and, you know, I'm saying I'm asking this person to rate their pain on a scale of one to 10 and they say, uh, they say 12 or they say, uh, Z, <laughs> like we're like they're giving an answer that doesn't make sense. So um, then we can look and say, well, what is the theory around pain? So pain is what a person says it is. Pain is expressed in nonverbal as well as verbal th ways. Um, there are different ways of assessing pain. So we can maybe use um, like a faces scale, an emoji scale, a scale where someone draws um, on a on a a line saying, you know, if this is the worst ever, where would you put the X? We could also have different kinds of assessment where we're looking at the nonverbal cues. Is the person restless? You know, do they have a high heart rate? Those kinds of things. So when we see something that's kind of not really working in practice, we can go back to the theory and say, what other options are available for me? And how have researchers and educators thought about this and created other models that I can use? So you adapt your practice based on different theoretical models that might suit. There might also be times where you need to adapt the theory. And uh, returning to our dialysis example, maybe you say we need to create a program of dialysis specifically for people who are working and have that separate from our mainstream dialysis program. So that way you would be expanding the theory to um, offer more options. So, and again, theory can be a formal theory, it can be evidence, um, it can be kind of a protocol or a standard way of doing things. But the idea is that you figure out how you can customize the care that the people you are working with um, need and want, and how you can make that work with the system we have. And so once you can do that and demonstrate what type of adaptations are appropriate, that is how you show critical thinking. So when you write in your assignments, perhaps use a work example. So explain a case where a patient needs dialysis or explain a case where you tried to assess pain and it didn't work and, and these were some of the things you drew on. By showing how you can think through those steps, that is what shows the person who's grading your assignments that you can demonstrate critical thinking. So I hope this is useful for you and that um, that gives you a better idea of what educators are looking for when we ask for critical thinking in your assignments. And uh, please feel free to share this video with your friends. And if you have follow-up questions, you can ask in the comments and I'll do my best to respond. All right, thank you very much.